Welcome back. Kathy here again. This time we're going to look at how to add the elements of your Dragonfly Box presentation to an InDesign template to assemble all the various file types uh, into one InDesign file. InDesign is a publication program that uh, takes text files and different types of image files, bitmap files, vector files, and assembles them into one graphic product. And we're just going to use this project to, as a very simple introduction to, to InDesign. We're going to learn how to use the um, InDesign frames on this project. So you'll notice that I've, I've downloaded the template here, which you can find in your assignment. You'll see that there is a pink line that goes all the way around the edge. This does not show up when the file is printed or, or viewed as a presentation. It only shows up when you view it in InDesign. And it is simply the safe margin. You want to keep all of your design elements within that pink line so that you don't end up designing something in an unprintable area. The blue rectangles that you see, some of them have crosses through them and some of them don't. These are InDesign frames. The ones that have the crosses through them are the image frames, which we'll be used, using to import your photograph and your Illustrator file. And then the ones that don't have the crosses through them are for importing text. I've already made these for you, but they're very, very simple to make. And you will find in the assignment a link to an Adobe tutorial that really uh, gets out into the weeds of how to work with InDesign frames and objects if you wish to push this learning any further. I'll be very, very happy, and you can earn full, full credit on this assignment if you simply use this template as I've given it to you. Let's start out by placing an image file. And to do that, I'm going to take my black selection tool first of all. I'm simply going to select the frame where I want my photograph to go. My aim is to put the, the uh, Illustrator file, the flat version of the design, in this box here to put the photograph that we photoshopped the dragonfly design onto into this frame to put the essay, the 300 word essay in this text box here, to put the credits in this text box here, and to put the title in this text box here. If you would like to add more than one photograph, as I say, you'll find a link to an Adobe tutorial that will help you rearrange these uh, text boxes and frames to your liking if you if you want to explore that far. But we're just going to use the template as given here. So now I've selected this frame and I'm going to add my image by using the place command. Place gives me a chance to go look for my file. I put all my dragonfly uh, box files into one file, uh, not only because that kind of helps me keep things organized and find them a little easier, but because we're going to be linking these files to the InDesign template. While they're linked, InDesign is going to show us a very low-res version that looks great on the computer screen but would not be adequate for printing. When we're done, I'm going to go back and embed the files when we're happy, and the, um, then the full resolution of each of these images will be embedded in my InDesign file. I made both a um, Photoshop document when I photoshopped the dragonfly design onto the photograph, and I also exported it to JPEG. You could choose either one of these to import into your InDesign file, and I'm going to just choose the PSD since I think a lot of you, that's what a lot of you will have. And there it goes, right into the frame that I had selected. Now you'll notice that it is very, very severely cropped, right? This little drag circle appears in the center when I hover my mouse over it, and I can drag the photo around, and you'll see a sort of a ghost version of the entire file. That's how much it's been cropped. Well, obviously, that doesn't work. We want the whole photo to show in that frame, or as much of it as we can, as we can get in there. So we're going to use the fitting commands. We're going to go Object, Fitting, 
and you'll see a whole bunch of different choices here. Uh, the first two choices, fill frame proportionately, proportionally, and fit content proportionally, are the two that best respect your proportions of your original photograph and your, your content, in other words. And obviously, I don't want to distort the dragonfly photograph to fit it to the frame. So I'm going to choose fit, fill frame proportionally, if I can pronounce it, and then my entire photograph gets shrunk down to fit the frame as well as it can. Now, the photograph is probably not going to be exactly the, the same proportions as the frame. For most of you, it won't be. I probably had in my mind the, the general uh, proportions of my photoshopped dragonfly photograph when I designed this template because it's not far off from, uh, from my actual proportions. But this frame here is cropping the photograph just slightly. And you can see on the left edge there, and maybe even a little bit on the right edge, the photograph is sticking out just a bit. Boy, it's awfully close though. Your photograph may stick out even further and you may have to slide it back and forth like this to get it to fit in the frame just as you want. But I'm quite happy with that fit. You can explore the other fit commands and see what happens if you choose, for example, object fitting fit content proportionally. You won't see much of change on this because my photograph is so close in proportion to the frame, but it will leave a little strip of white. It will ensure, in other words, that the entire content shows and it will um, simply not quite fill it when there's a, a difference between the photograph and the proportions of the frame. These two down here fit the frame to the content will distort the frame in order to fit around your photo. Obviously you don't want to do that if you're committed to the frame and in this case I feel like I am. You can also fit the content to the frame but this will distort the photograph. In my case it wouldn't make a big deal but if this were a long skinny photograph, for example, you would not want to distort it that way. So you can explore those, um, but I think the first one is probably going to be the one that you're want, going to want to choose for this, the fill frame proportionally, and then use the circle, the little drag circle, to just shiver the thing back and forth until you're happy with exactly the cropping that the frame is giving you. You'll notice that when you put that in, there is a little blue sign that appears here, a little link, a little uh, uh, pair of uh, chain links. And this is to remind us, as I mentioned, that we have not yet embedded this file. We've only linked it. So right now, if I were to move that photograph out of the folder, InDesign would not know where it, it is. It would not know where to find it. And we, uh, the next time I open this file, I'd get a big question mark there um, saying that it's lost the original copy of the photograph. So while you're in the process of linking photos and before you embed them, photos and any other imagery, um, make sure you don't move them from the, the file folder where you're storing them. We'll be embedding these right away and so it really isn't going to be an issue. Let's now embed, our, our link rather, the um, AI file that we created to show the uh, flat, more detailed version of the design. So again, I'm going to use the place command and I'm going to navigate to my file and this is the AI file, the dragonfly box template with cattails. And it's going to pop that in there. Now you would think that the, um, that the whole thing was showing here because these rectangles are pretty darn good. But actually, if I use the drag circle, circle, you can see that some of the, um, and a little bit of the edge of this is cut off, and also the dimensions on the left side are cut off, which I'd really like to have show. So again, while this frame is selected here, I'm going to go up and use the fitting commands, object, fit, and this time I don't want to crop my design. So I'm going to cho choose fit content, proportionally to make sure that all the content goes in. And in this case, uh, what InDesign is doing 
is just adding a little bit of white at the top and bottom to uh, all the illustrator elements that I have in, in there, the illustrator paths. It counts the edges of the illustrator paths as the edge of my content. It doesn't count the uh, margin of the 8.5 by 11 file, but that's exactly what I want. I would like the paths in the file to show. And I note that when I select away from this, there's no edge to this except the little blue um, edge of the frame, which does not print. So I might want at this point to say, I'm going to give this box a stroke, this frame. And I can do that over here. I can give it a fill if I want. I don't think I want to give that box a fill because I kind of like the white background of the Illustrator file as is. But if I want to give it a stroke, I would simply um, choose the stroke command here. And I don't want to give it a green stroke. I want to give it a black stroke. So can I find black? There it is. So I'm simply going to give it a two-point black stroke. That two-point black stroke looks a little heavy to me. I'm going to turn it down to one point. Select a way so I can see it a little better. That I like the looks of that better. So I can give my frames either a stroke or a fill. Let's try a text frame and let's try giving it a fill this time. I'm going to put my statement in here, my 300 word statement. I didn't write a 300 word statement just like I didn't design a uh, Dragonfly <laughs> box. I simply used a, an available Illustrator fill for that. But, but I have copied a um, famous speech here. So I'm going to take the text tool and insert my cursor into this text frame. And I'm simply, I have the uh, Martin Luther King's, I have a dream speech, an excerpt of that on my uh, clipboard. I'm going to just copy and paste that in. Um, you'll notice I, I aimed for a chunk of this wonderful speech that is a little over 300 words. And you will notice that when I pasted that in, a little red icon appears down here. Can you see where my cursor is swimming around it? That red icon shows up when you try to paste something into a text box at a certain size and a certain uh, typeface that that makes it too big to fit. So when you see that little red, tiny red square, it's very hard to see, but you'll see it when you uh, when you take when you paste your own essay in, I'm sure. Uh, it, Illustrator is saying there there's something in my memory, uh, not Illustrator, InDesign, I'm sorry, is saying there's something in my memory, you know, on, on the clipboard that didn't fit in here. So you might want to do something about that. And what I'm going to do about it is select all this stuff by putting my cursor in and simply going Command All. And I'm going to turn down the type size to 11 points and see if that red thing goes away. And lucky me, it did go away. The, um, the whole uh, excerpt from the I Have a Dream speech now fits into my type box. Now my excerpt went into the uh, to the box here, the type box, in the font uh, in which I copied it, uh, or, or at least in InDesign's closest attempt at, at recreating the font in which I copied it online. I would actually like this to appear in Myriad Pro because that's the typeface that I used in uh, Illustrator when I labeled the template for the Dragonfly box. So I'd, I'd sort of like to use the same typeface. So let's see if we can get Myriad Pro in here. I'm changing, there it is. Myriad Pro, does it still fit? Lucky me, it still fits. And now I have it in a typeface that is consistent with the typeface that I've already used uh, in Illustrator here. You don't have to do that. You could choose to use a different font, and you may have a very important design reason for doing that. 
that's just fine and it's a good choice to make. You may also go into Illustrator and change the font that I, that I used for the Dragonfly box template if you wish to make them all in copper plate or whatever. So um, I'm now going to create a title for this by typing into this box, the uh, text box here. I don't have any um, text to cut and paste into this. I'm simply going to try a few titles here and see what they look like. Let's see if I, let's, let's just stick with uh, Myriad Pro. Uh, there it is. Maybe we'll, yeah, I was going to say we'll use bold for this. We'll knock ourselves out. 36 points may not fit here. I'm going to try typing. Oh, it does fit. Okay. So I'm going to try typing dragonfly box. That would be a title. Um, it might not say everything you want to say, and it certainly doesn't fill up the template. Not that it has to, but let's say, um, let's say I call my design marsh cattails uh, a new whoops, environment for Cascadia's dragonfly box. That fits and fills it a little bit more. You may feel that this text box isn't large enough. You may feel that it's the wrong shape. And, and you are welcome, as I say, to edit the frame and, of course, to choose whatever typography you like to make this work and look great for you. I think I'd like to give that text box. I'm going to see if I can make this just a tiny bit bigger so it fills it just a little bit more. I wonder if it will let me do 38 point type in there. And let's see if we can give this frame a fill. I'm going to look in my swatches for the fill I want and I actually um, I imported a bunch of swatches into InDesign uh, so that I would be able to, uh, to use a nice fill here in some of my, oh, there it is, a nice soft green. And I think I'll put that same fill in this box here. Actually, I've got to go down and look for it again. There we go. And I could do that for this text box too. In this text box, I'm going to type the names of all the contributors to the entire design. And I think while I'm at it, since I put a stroke around this image box, I may do that for this one too. I will select this image box and give it a black one point stroke so that both my image boxes have a stroke and all my text boxes have a fill. And then of course I'm going to use this type tool here to type in the box my group uh, name. I can change the font. I can change the um, type size just as in any Word document. Um, and I'm going to list the group members here and um, you and since I'm the only one in my group, it's not a very big list, but you have a chance here to credit everyone in your group. But I would like uh, you to um, also credit our class and say what order this is so that we have some kind of um, record of who created these design proposals. You obviously may, may decide that this box isn't the right size. You may wish to change the orientation and the, um, you may make your text box overlap each other. You may nest them inside each other. You can do whatever you want that way. The last step here um, before we export is going to be to embed the linked files. Oh, I wanted to show you how to, how to import swatches if you want. I've got some swatches in my InDesign. Uh, file that I got out of Illustrator. 
and I wanted, it can be very, very frustrating to figure out how to get these color swatches, especially if you created a palette that you would really like to be able to use in InDesign. So let me just show you that. Um, what you're going to do is open up your swatch library anywhere that, where that you can find it, for example, in the um, swatch here. You're, and you'll see a tiny little uh, set of three lines here. This is the swatch menu. And you're going to go all the way down to save swatch library as ASE. I'm not sure what ASE stands for, but it is the format, the file format in which uh, Illustrator and InDesign like to save their swatch libraries. And it will give you probably a swatch folder, which is kind of built into the Adobe uh, format that comes when you when you uh, get Creative Cloud onto your computer. And you can name the, um, the uh, swatch folder, whatever you want. The default name will be the name of the file from which it came. And I'm not going to click Save because I've already done this. You will click Save, and then you will go. You've exported it from Illustrator, and then you will go back to InDesign and you will import it. So what you're going to do is open the um, swatch window. You're going to go to color, which is where the swatch window is hiding in, uh, in InDesign. You're going to go again to a similar little three-line menu here, and you're going to go down to load swatches. When you open that, you will get a chance to navigate into the swatch folder in the Adobe folders, and you will find the um, swatches, the, the folder that you uh, that you just stored by name. Uh, you can search for it by name, in, in fact, instead of navigating all through Adobe. And then um, you simply click open. I've already done this, so I'm going to click cancel, but that's how you will import. That's how I got all these swatches in here from my Dragonfly box. Okay, so the other thing that we want to do is embed the linked files. If I were to print this file out as it is, I would get very, very pixelated versions of these photographs because although they, although they look good on the screen, uh, they are at 72 dpi, and you really need um, a much higher resolution to print. So we want to get all the resolution that we have in our images. So for the... Um, AI file, you're simply, and, and for the um, PSD file too, you're simply going to go to uh, uh, links. And if you don't see this little link here on your uh, sidebar, you can always, of course, go to a window and click links there to open it up. And I'm going to select both of these links by clicking on one and shift selecting the other. And then I'm going to go to this tiny little menu. You seem to use these a lot in InDesign. And I'm simply going to click Embed Link. And when I do, you will notice that the little blue link signs have disappeared and that now these files are embedded and saved within my ID file. This makes my ID file a lot bigger and heavier, um, but it also um, means that I no longer have to worry about whether or not uh, I've moved the original photos. I can send this to someone without the original photos and they will get all the information that's in it and be able to print it out. So now the last thing that you're going to do is export your file. And I'm going to first of all save it. Very important to save this simply as the InDesign file that it is. Now I'm also going to save it as, and I'll show you why. I'm going to save it in my Dragonfly box files. Um, if you save as, you get the automatic InDesign 2022 document, which is what happened when you originally saved it, but you also get a chance to save it as an InDesign CS4 IDML, and I recommend that you do that as well because um, this creates a file as it's telling us here, that you can open in an older version of InDesign. So say that you um, decide that you want to work on this file or share it with someone, perhaps, who has a, is working on a library computer or in the Bach Learning Center and, the, and InDesign has not been updated for a year or two. They'll be able to open it on, and manipulate it on that older version. So um, we have found that in the past classes to be an extremely important step. 
The final thing is, of course, you also have to submit this as, um, at least for the final design, you have to export it to PDF. And you'll do that by hitting the Export button rather than the Save As button, and simply choose the Adobe PDF print format that is shown there. Uh, go ahead and use all the settings that are there by default and hit export. And then you will have the file saved three different ways as an InDesign file, as an IDML, and as a PDF. Very simple. Have fun. Good luck. I look forward to seeing you assemble all the parts of this complex project into an InDesign presentation.